everybody and happy Easter and welcome to our service of Holy Communion. As you can see we're here in the dining room at our, at our vicarage in, in Blackrod. But you're all very welcome and I'm so pleased that you're able to join us from your own homes today. But we just should need to be mindful of those people who are not able to join us um, from their homes. Uh, but those are people who are in our hearts and in our prayers at this time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with Amen. you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is, he risen, is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Now I suggested that you might like to have a candle ready for this service. Of course, we can't light our pastel candle as we would normally do today. Um, but if we just light our own little individual candles, it will remind us that Jesus is present with us in our lives today. So we light our candles. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can quench. Dying. You destroyed our death, rising you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Alleluia. We will say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Amen. So Peter is going to read our first reading for us, taken from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to those assembled in the house of Cornelius. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread through Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us, who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. 
hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over look, to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Lord Christ. Christ. And now for the wonders of technology and with the help of Evelyn and Tim Eden we're going to listen to Mrs Christine Radford, our reader emeritus at St John's. She delivers our, our, our Easter message today. Good morning everybody. I hope you've got a copy of this picture with you. It should be on your pew sheet but if it's not I will hold it up to the screen so that you can see it at the appropriate time. It's a graphic that we've used for a number of years part of our team Easter experience and it never failed to cause a stir. Many of the children will already be familiar with it and they know what to do but for those who don't here are the instructions. In the middle of the picture you will see that there's a line of four dots and what you should do stare steadily at those four dots in the middle of the picture for 30 seconds or so. I'm going to time it. Now, close your eyes and wait for an image to form. Well, what did you see? Anything or nothing? Most people will see a face. Some people see it in black and white. Some see it in colour. Personally, I see it in a sepia tone. 
Some people can't see it at all, try as they might, because our brains are all wired differently and respond differently to the same stimulus. So don't worry, it's not a competition or even a spiritual exercise. It's just a bit of fun. I never get tired of doing it. Every time I hope that the image will be clearer next time. The question is, whose image do you think that might be? Most people immediately say, Jesus, even though we have no idea what Jesus actually looks like. We would love it to be him. Now, just as some people have difficulty in seeing Jesus, the picture on their inner, inner eye, so many people have difficulty in seeing Jesus in life until he speaks directly to them. On the Easter morning, Mary went to the tomb to grieve, to pay her respects at the first possible opportunity after the Sabbath. When she saw that the stone had been rolled away, she must have been horrified, assuming that the body had been desecrated, and she immediately ran to bring Simon Peter and John to investigate. They all found the tomb empty. The cloth had been wrapped round the body, lying on the ground but no sign of Jesus himself. Greatly perturbed, the men returned to their lodgings, but Mary lingered on, weeping disconsolately. As a result, hers was the privilege of being the first to encounter the risen Jesus, and yet, even face to face with a man she knew and loved, she failed to see him properly until he spoke to her. It's interesting that in nearly every account of the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus, he often wasn't recognised immediately. Not until he spoke to the individual and their hearts responded, taking over from their disbelieving minds. And so it is with us. We may read the Bible stories and believe them, but until we encounter Jesus for ourselves, until he speaks to our hearts, we fail to see him. Many people look for him in the wrong place. They look at the empty cross, at the empty tomb. But he isn't there. Jesus has left them behind. He has triumphed over death. He is alive. He says to us all, in John's Gospel, because I live, you also will live. He is with us wherever we are, Whatever we face, through his Holy Spirit, he will be in our hearts, in our everyday lives, if we will allow him to be. At this troubled time, we're all particularly in need of this assurance and the comfort that offers. We are not alone. God himself is with us. Whatever happens, whatever we are called upon to bear, he is he will be with us in all our trials. We have his word. Deuteronomy, it says, The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. This virus is a dreadful scourge, but it is a natural event. This is not the first pandemic the world has known. One day it will be over, and everyday life will resume a more normal pattern. What, I wonder, will be our normal, our lasting memories of this time? There's much fear and much suffering, but there's also much to give us hope. We can see the face of Jesus all around us, in the love and selflessness being shown by so many people. We see NHS staff at every level risking their own lives to relieve the sufferings of others, as well as the care staff in our nursing homes and in the wider community. We see lorry drivers taking supplies all over the country to keep our shops stocked, our services running. Shop workers frantically restocking shelves and dealing with what is sometimes an awkward public. The bus and train drivers keeping the networks going. The council workers keeping our streets clean and free of rubbish. The list goes on. And we can see it 
in the lovely individuals of showing to their neighbours, running errands despite long queues, calling or texting those in isolation, volunteering to help the NHS cope. Vincent and I have been on the receiving end of so much love and practical help during a difficult and painful year, but particularly now, when like so many of our age, we're trapped at home for the greater good. Jesus reaches out to us in a practical way to the church family. Jesus is alive and at work in our communities, in our lives, and if we'll let him, in our hearts. Praise him. As we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, we remember that through the Paschal Mystery, we have died and been buried with him in baptism. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. So now we have an opportunity to renew those baptismal vows. So I ask, do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? I reject, I reject them. them. Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? I, I renounce, renounce them. them. Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbour? I, I repent, repent of, them. of them. In baptism, God calls us out of darkness into his marvellous light. Therefore, I ask, do you turn to Christ as Saviour? I turn, turn to Christ. Christ. Do you submit to Christ as Lord? I submit, I submit to, to Christ. Christ. Do you come to Christ, the way, the truth, and the life? I, I come, come to Christ. Christ. So let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ, Christ died for our sins, sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was, he was raised, raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. Now we come to our time of prayer as we celebrate the new life of resurrection that is prayer to the one true God who brings us all to life. Loving God, on this day when we celebrate the joy of our risen Lord, not gathered together as we would wish, but separately in our own homes. We pray that your church may nevertheless joyfully proclaim the good news of your message of hope for the world. May our lives, as well as our worship, testify to the truth of the resurrection and the power of the Spirit of Christ that dwells within us. Help us to look to those things that are above that we may give ourselves to the needs of the world below, that we may see your face in friend and stranger and seek to serve you in all the world. We pray today for the Archbishops of Canterbury and York and for our own Bishops David, Mark and Mark, that you will strengthen them at this challenging time as they lead your church in the ways of hope and joy. We pray for all the churches in our team and thank you for the new ways that you have enabled us to keep in touch and to stay connected. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, we pray for the world we live in, for heads of state and all who govern making important decisions. We pray especially for our own government and prime minister, Give them wisdom, compassion, and a hunger for justice and mercy as they shape national policies to cope with this time of pandemic. We pray that the Easter message of hope and new life may be heard in all regions of the world, especially in places struggling with unrest, war, natural disaster, or disease. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Loving God, we thank you for the signs of new life we see all around us. Sunshine and the lighter evenings, the blossoming of spring flowers, the bird songs, the insects. We thank you for the reminder that though our lives may be confined at present, 
your all is held, everything is held in your loving embrace and nothing can separate us from your love. Be with all those who are alone because of this situation and we thank you for the wonders of technology which enable us not only to speak to our loved ones but also to see them. In spite of the restrictions at this Easter time, may all our relationships blossom with love. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, at this season of hope, we offer our prayers for those who cannot hope because of the pain or anguish that engulfs them. Many are anxious and afraid of what might happen in the future. Many are sick at home or in hospital. Comfort them and bring them your peace. Heal them and make them whole. We thank you for our NHS and for all who tend the sick and care for the vulnerable. Give them the resources they need practically and spiritually to cope with the burdens laid upon them. In a moment of silence, we bring to mind those who've asked us for our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, we thank you for lives well lived in faith and hope and commend to your keeping all those who have died recently and especially those who have died alone. Bring comfort to all who mourn a loved one, all who have not been able to attend the funeral of friends and family. Please strengthen all who deal with death and bereavement in these difficult days. We thank you for the resurrection hope and the everlasting joy of heaven that you have promised to those who put their trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord God, we thank you for the precious gift of life. May we never take it for granted, but live each moment in the fullness of life that Jesus has won for us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So now we go over to Evelyn and Tim, who will lead us in the song, In Christ Alone.
disciples and said peace be with you then were they glad when they saw the Lord hallelujah the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you let us offer one another a sign of peace the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All, All things, things come from you, and, and of your, your own, own do we give you. you. The Lord is here. His, His Spirit, Spirit is, is with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them, them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resounded with gladness, while angels and archangels and all the powers of all creation proclaim forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, Dying you, you destroyed, destroyed our death. death. Rising, Rising you, you restored, restored our life. Lord Jesus, come, come in glory. glory. 
His little father coined to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world. Rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep, keep the feast. Alleluia. Alleluia. gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. I do hope that you've enjoyed the service. And thank you to all my team members who took part today, to Christine and to Tim and to Evelyn and to Peter for joining us today. So I do hope and pray that you have a, a blessed Easter and that you all keep safe and keep praying and we'll soon, get, we'll soon be back in church together. We'll get through this if we stick together. So God the Father, by whose love Jesus was raised from the dead, Open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share in the Easter faith. Amen. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, whom the Lord breathed into his disciples, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and those whom you love, now and always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.